invasive native scrub, or, or abbreviated INS, um, has, has been a major issue in this immediate district for, for a lot of years. In recent history, it's had major germination periods in the 50s and, and, and the 90s, and now the most recent one is, is 2010-11. Uh, we've got lots of new regrowth. And so from a distance it looks like the, um, the area is reasonably healthy because you can see quite good shrubs and tree coverage. But when you get up close and you start to look down, you'll see that there's a lot of terracing, you'll see there's a lot of um, erosion, there's a lot of um, gullies, etc. with very little ground cover. With the INS regrowth, invasive native scrub has been regrowing here in, in, for, for a lot of years. It's diminished the, the carrying capacity of this country as far as grazing is concerned, or any basic management, whether it's, it's, it's opportune cropping or so on, it's diminished it dramatically to the point of, you know, to put in figures, we're flat running one sheep to eight hectares, but if we follow through with the invasive native scrub property vegetation plan, and we chain it and rake it and develop it, and encourage native perennials to come back, and we also fence it with TGP fencing, which is total grazing pressure fencing, to control all grazing on it. Um, we've found we can get back to one sheep to one hectare. The invasive native scrub in the Kobay area, because of the hard red soils, does end up resulting in very hard set soils with high levels of erosion. This rehab really does bring back the country to more of a natural state where we've got more of a mosaic of open and closed areas where we've got grass and trees, and therefore biodiversity really thrives a lot more. Pre-European settlement, the, we the western landscape looked much different to what it does today. It would have been most likely a mix of a mosaic of native grasslands, open woodlands and areas of shrubs. And so we're trying to restore that landscape back to what it was. And when people are implementing the INS PVP, that's what they're doing in terms of um, improving that landscape and restoring the ground cover. So we're trying to get um, that mosaic to achieve a biodiversity outcome and to also improve ground cover and soil stability. So it's a win-win situation. The landholder gets an improved production and the NRM outcomes are also achieved. During the uh, chaining process, um, which happens after the landholder uh, sort of applies for a PVP, uh, the, 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 two, the two operators on the, on the dozers actually se selectively uh, harvest the species by sort of weaving in and out of the target and non-target species, creating a, uh, a suitable landscape which is in line with the PVP process. And we were looking as a group, we're concerned about the amount of waste we're burning because we, we're creating you know, immense amounts of, of, of tonnage per hectare, in excess of 100 tonne per hectare of dry, dry biomass. Um, so we're looking at ways to utilise it rather than just drop a match in it. So the concept from, of the Western Regeneration has come up with, with generating power from it. That's where that concept has started from. It's actually illegal under the Protection of Environment Operations Act at the moment to use native timber for the generation of electricity. So we've been working with um, our ministers and our, um, our government reps to see if there can be some variation to the regulations, which we're getting really good support from everybody as well. I think people can see and the government can see that this is a legitimate waste to be burning something um, of this nature out in the paddock. Chaining and raking is, is a, a, a fairly expensive task, but the, the amount of uh, extra production produced or, or cost benefits that come after the uh, uh, process make the, make the chaining and raking sort of uh, really worthwhile. There's been a goal of ours to really try and assist in getting an end use to this biomass, so therefore it should be viable for somebody to purchase that timber or come in and rehabilitate that land for the landholders so that they don't have that added cost of running a property out in this area. We hope that this project will enable landholders to have the land rehabilitated for no cost at all to the landholder. Current practices of uh, stick raking are to push the timber up into piles and, uh, and burn them. Instead of the energy going up into the atmosphere, we'd prefer the, uh, to put the energy into a, into a power plant situation and use the energy for, uh, to produce power and, instead of being wasted up into the atmosphere. We've got a few different angles that we're looking at which include biochar and coking coal replacement charcoal. But the main option that we're looking at is 
hopefully will be the use of this timber, which has got quite a high calorific value for the generation of electricity. We've had tests done on the biomass here that's um, been generated as a result of these rehabilitation works that people are doing. And the calorific value is in the, um, much, the amount of energy that's within this wood is really high. I guess it's just based on the fact that it's slow growing, there's a lot of oils and it's quite dense timber. We found that it was way better than brown coal and, and as good as some black coal, which spurred us on and, and, and told us that you know, we were on a winner, that we had something, a resource that, that was worth doing something with. This concept came out of a, a, a group of people who all belong to the, the Bucker and Landcare group. And We've worked on this, this concept for quite a while. Hopefully this project will come through with some benefits for all part of the region and the state. The big thing to start off with, I guess, is the rehabilitation of the land, the environment itself, which has benefits just from the animals and the biodiversity, but also just from grazing and production value. We also have benefits for local industry, for the mines where they have a bit of security and electricity generation. There's power off the grid, but even the, down the track we could end up with more power on the grid. It's um, a new industry for Cobar, which has employment benefits, etc. So hopefully it'll be a win-win-win. We can now offer, well, at the point of offering local standalone mines that can't access power out of the grid, we've moved to the point where we're offering them a power plant and all they've got to do is facilitate a little bit of country for us to put it on and they'll pay us a kilowatt price, as simple as that. So I mean there's initial benefits just from the chaining. You know, you get that huge, uh, a huge amount of, of prolific growth caused by the disturbance of the soil and, and the same with stick raking, you know, you get that after, you know, it looks fairly bare at the moment but the first shower of rain on it because that, that amount of soil disturbance or the amount of tilth in the soil, you get that huge, huge biomass growth, you know, of grass or perennials perennial grasses. We as a land care group was becoming too difficult to, to move forward and, and uh, go into negotiations and, and contract with other companies. So we decided we would form a new company which we've called Western Regeneration. Because the concept came out of our land care group, to make sure that all the people that had part of that concept, had input into that concept, had opportunity, we offered it, we only offered the shares to become shareholders of the new company to the existing group. This concept that was born out of the BLG group, it's going to have great benefits, it's going to have community benefits for the group because we're going to share lots of knowledge and we're also going to help each other out uh, and those group members that have, that have, that have become shareholders of the, of the new company will benefit financially as well and environmentally it gets it both ways. We're helping the state government um, achieve their goals with their INSPVPs, with their, with their Native Veg Act and it's also excellent for the, for the local environment. We're improving our sheet erosion and all the, all of the other issues that come with, with, with dense grub and so economically each individual um, uh, benefits as well. We can see that it's going to help this region, it's going to help the landscape, it's going to help the environment and so hopefully in a couple of years time everyone will be saying wow I'm glad those people put the effort in that they have and we're pretty excited about doing it as well.